Delve into any bookshop and you will find a shelf groaning with authors' attempts to explain how money is made, lost, lent and borrowed. Popular macroeconomics tells a particular fairy tale. Interest rates are used to regulate the economy. Central bankers lower rates to boost investment and pep up activity, or raise them to rein things in. Therefore, low interest rates are a harbinger of good times or easy money, and therefore high investment and growth. If the fairy tale were true, charts like this one would be telling us that thanks to low interest rates, we are now in a glorious environment for investment. Of course, it isn't. Lex spends countless hours discussing investment with analysts and finance directors. Never is the market interest rate given more than a backstage role in the decision to invest or sit back. Instead, it's all about the size and reliability of the prospective return. In the words of the Siemens Chief Financial Officer, we don't decide to spend more just because interest rates are lower for a couple of years. Instead, history shows that interest rates tend to be high when growth is high. If investment and growth are not driven by interest rates, what is going on? First, there is a modicum of sense to the fairy tale. A central banker easing policy uses money to buy shorter dated debt, driving up its price, which leads to lower rates. I am going to lower interest rates is central banker code for I am easing policy. But what has been missing from this tale is demand. More money also boosts incomes and expected inflation, which will increase the demand to borrow at any one interest rate. This drives up equilibrium interest rates. If this sounds counterintuitive, let me banish your confusion by introducing a different fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom that used gold as its currency. A wicked dragon sat upon a hoard of gold, more than all the rest in the kingdom. One day, a hero slayed the dragon and the townspeople rushed to haul home the plunder. As gold floods the kingdom, the price of everything from goatskins to castles will be expected to double. If you were a banker in that kingdom, would you still lend on the same terms as before? Not if you were sensible. So what if there is more available to lend? This effect will be swamped by the falling value of the currency in which people are repaid. A sensible banker would raise interest rates. Of course, modern economies are more complicated than that. QE is not expected to have the same effect as the dragon's flood of gold, because nobody expects it to be permanent. But if it were, you should be expecting the same kind of effects. Extremely easy money leading to rapidly rising prices, which leads to high interest rates. The bottom line, the headline interest rate is an extremely ambiguous indicator of the monetary stance. You need to look not only at interest rates, but currency markets, equity prices and forecasts of economic activity. Easy money simply means that money is easy to come by. It's only in fairy tales that low interest rates and easy money are the same thing. If you don't believe me, ask any of the surviving finance directors for their reminiscences of early 2009.